Hey, welcome to another edition of Cooking with Chef Nate, Nathaniel Moser, Frederico. Sometimes I call him Pete, you know, but he always, he's a great guy, you know, he always answers. So today he's going to take the show and he's going to be the hand model, right, for this particular dish. We're doing potato gnocchi. We're visiting Italy once again, and I think this is a fun dish. So I'm going to walk you through it while he actually does the job. So what we have is six Idaho potatoes and you know 80 counts of the big ones and a lot of times you don't see those in the store so whatever you can find I'm gonna say six to eight six seems to work you know my recipes are kinda mystical uh, it's all about knowing technique as opposed to reading a recipe so what we've done is we baked off six of those we've already taken five and run them through a food grinder Actually, you could use a sieve and a spoon, but this seems to be faster to me, and you can pick them up down at our friends at O'Hara's. They've got them on special. Nice place to shop. So, as that happens, you're also going to need to have two or three whole eggs. We've got four, just in case we have an accident. Um, about a cup and three quarters of flour. I've got a little bit of olive oil. Extra virgin is nice for this. I've got black pepper. I've got salt, I've got Parmesan cheese. How many more things do you have? That's not a lot. It sounds like a lot, but it's not. So what you're going to do is put that up over. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you can do it on this. Um, actually, you can do it on the island. That's not a problem. Um, because that's the way we made pasta before. If you remember the big mess that I made, we had to call housekeeping, you know, and they were very upset with me for a couple of days. But <clears throat> pasta, you want to get your elbows in it, right? So we like to start with a bowl this time around. We start on the island. It doesn't make any difference, you know. Maybe your wife's cleaning up, your husband's cleaning up, you know, I don't know. So what happens with this is you get all the little pieces out of it. You don't have lumpy mashed potatoes. This is a great way to make mashed potatoes, too, with some hot cream and butter melted. Wow, nice. So what is gnocchi? Because it's got a G on it that doesn't make any sense. It's G-N-O-C-H-H-I. No, C-C-H-I. Okay, uh, gnocchi. So, not gnocchi, but gnocchi. Like he got a head cold. So he's going to put that through, and then we're going to just start mixing some things into it. Again, you know, some of the greatest dishes are based on rural, rustic cooking. Things that people relied on to get through harsh winters. So you want something that sticks to your ribs. Potatoes, polenta, heavy sauces products that come from just around the corner. Fortunately, we're getting into that again. So, there we go. So he's going to go ahead and take now. Um, what do you want to start with? Uh, uh, eggs. Eggs. Okay, we're going to do it with two. I think two is going to be enough for this recipe. And really, it's a matter of feel because you can always add more flour to it. And just go ahead and put it in your bowl. That's good. Um, too much flour and they're going to be pasty. Not enough flour and they fall apart. So it's always about feel, and you need to make it a couple times. The first time I ever made it, it was you know, not that good. The third time I made it, it was not that great. It just takes practice. You just have to keep working with it. So we've got a little bit of nutmeg. Nutmeg works magic with white things, okay? You know, any kind of white sauce, that's very important. A um, little salt. We use kosher, you know. Iodized is fine. I'm going to mix that into it. And it also has a little bit, the olive oil adds a richness to it. The fruitiness of an extra virgin olive oil, it adds a real nice fruitiness to it. And I'm not talking about my cousin. I'm talking about the flavor, the flavor. You know, it's all about flavor. And so, cheese is a binder and really adds some depth to it. Now these things, you can't eat a lot of them. Because you have to go to bed afterwards. It's, you know, they're very heavy. Yeah. So he's incorporated, and you want to tilt that up so that they can see it at the house, right? Because now they're going to, actually, they're probably working from their kitchen. They've got their laptop hooked up in there, right? So now the flour is going to go in, and we're going to use probably about three quarters of the flour because we want to have some to knead. And we're going to see how it holds up, and we'll let you see the texture of it. And this is a fun, you know, cook at home. Get your kids to cook at the house, you know, instead of going to McDonald's for supper. So, you know, it's getting this, you know, what's happening, you see it's sticky, and what we're trying to do is alleviate that stickiness. You know, so we just keep adding to it. We just keep adding to it. And it's okay if you make a mess. I do too. You know? Don't be afraid. Yeah, don't be afraid to make a mess. It's okay. Uh -huh. 
Now, again, there's a jillion ways, and we're going to show you. We have some already cooked up because we've talked about pasta before. Okay, we're going to show you how to roll them, but we're not going to show you how to cook them because you know we've cooked pasta, salted water. Obviously, you want lots of water on the stove. Okay. Yeah. I think go ahead and add about half of what you got in there, and don't be afraid to just, you know, make it mush. And what he's doing is being cautious because if you get too much flour in there, again, they're going to be too heavy. You know, and you guests aren't going to like that. You know, they're heavy enough as it is. A lot of different things that you can do with them as well. So let's go ahead and about half of this. And then we're going to yeah. put the other half out. Okay. See, that's good, huh? That looks better. Sometimes you got to be bold. Jump in there. Sometimes you got to be cautious. I don't know. Depends on whether your mother-in-law's coming over for dinner. That's another story in and of itself. I always loved mine. God rest her soul. She had an accident, you know. I think you're going to just take that and let's take half of what you got. Okay. okay. And let's put it on top of the flour that's on your table. And let's work that in. And let's see if you can roll it out. And, of course, we've got, uh, do we have some more flour over there at the end of the table? Yes, sir, yeah. You know, maybe Rebecca could grab that for you. Awesome. Yeah. Rebecca, she's, uh, she's Cecil's uh, secretary or something. I don't know. Thank you. Now we've got some extra flour. We're going to go ahead and put some extra flour out here, and that's going to give you room to work. Okay. So it's like the pasta dough. It really is. It's a lot like the pasta dough. I'm going to move this out of your way. What we're trying to do is now get it into kind of a log shape, and we're going to roll it back and forth until we get kind of a snake thing going on, okay? And then we're going to cut it into little sections. See now? As he patiently works it back and forth. Oh, it's so much work. No, it's not. It just seems like it is. You know, you can it do this. In, yeah, it takes 20 minutes. It's done. Yeah, but it was quicker to go to McDonald's. Well, I know. Yeah, it tastes way better. That's it. Very important. So now you can make them as thin as you want or as big as you want. I mean, it's all up to you. I like kind of delicate, small things, you know, something that you can... Uh, actually, it looks like you have more on the plate. You see how that works? Nice. Very nice. Now, we don't have a gnocchi board, but he's going to show you with a fork what we like to do to kind of give the indentations of the classical gnocchi shape. Um, and again, he's got his knife, and he's just going to cut a few pieces off. And then he's going to use his fork for a little trick there. And just a little flour on your fork, too. That way it doesn't stick. And you're just going to roll them forward. Yeah, and you're just going to roll them forward. Great. And so that kind of gives it that nice traditional yolky shape. Now, those are going to puff up a little bit. All right, so we're going to go ahead and swap places. That'll give him a chance to wash his hands. And then we'll get tied up in the cord. It'll be an interesting show for you. What we've done is we've, again, the salted water. Uh, we're going to boil these gently until they float to the surface. And they don't take long because it's a fresh pasta product. And so basically, this is it. These are fun little dumplings, okay? And so you can put them in ice bath, ice water, and put them in your fridge. You can freeze them at this point with the little handy hefty bags, right? Those are great. And so what uh, Nathaniel's going to do at this point, one of my favorite things, he's got some olive oil and garlic and heavy cream, the gnocchi, and cheese. Okay, so now we're going to do something really neat and very low calorie, by the way. I'm just joking because it's not. This young man uh, is going to take our gnocchi to the next level. So we have a little olive oil in the pan and he's going to start his fire. We're going to cook a little bit of garlic. Now we don't want to blacken garlic because what happens when you blacken garlic, it gets very bitter. You know, and that's not good. We want a nice, subtle garlic flavor, and you don't need... And remember, when you chop the garlic really small into a small mince, you know, it's going to be more powerful. So it can be your choice. You can slice it or you can dice it. I like to dice it and use less. And so there we go, a little garlic. And again, we're just going to kind of infuse that oil. Well, it's not a tomato sauce. No, it's not a tomato sauce. This is a cream sauce. And so once the infusion takes place, and you can smell the garlic wafting through the studio even now as we speak, um, which is nice, right? So then he's going to add his cream. And get 
heavy cream, heavy whipping cream, and if you can find not ultra pasteurized, that would be great. Ultra pasteurized makes it, you know, stick around longer, but it doesn't give you the oomph that you need. The fat content is going to give you a nice reduction because as the flame comes up, you know, we're going to get some bigger bubbles. It's going to start to reduce and, and it gets thicker. So there's a natural thickening that takes place so you don't have to use flour. And, you know, really that's where you get a lot of your calories from a roux. And I think even though there's a lot of fat, it's a natural fat. It's good for you. It's not going to kill you because they can tell you all day long how bad it is for you, but it's not. You just don't eat six pounds of it. And then preferably you go take a walk afterwards. So you see it's starting to bubble now. He's going to go ahead and add his gnocchi to it. And then we're going to hit it with some cheese and some Parmesan. It's a very simple process. Again, if you made up like Randy does, he makes up those beautiful gnocchi on Sunday. And so Wednesday night, you know, he comes in from church and he's got a little hunger going on. And he has his wife get in there and make some beautiful. Actually, he does it himself because his wife's mad at him tonight. You know, it's great stuff. It's fantastic. I just love it. You know, and so he's going to turn on nuclear powered heat because we want to just get that, 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 go ahead and turn it up really high. We want to get that heat to penetrate into those because uh, they're a little bit cool. But again, that, we, you know, we always talk about the five P's in class, prior planning prevents poor performance. It's really important to think about, that's great, you know, let it go. Uh, it's really think, you know, think about what you want to have on Wednesday so Sunday afternoon, you know, you're, you're cooking for it. Or actually do it on Saturday so Sunday you can watch the game with the guys. So you're going to go with the cheese now and then again if you, you know, we're using uh, Parmesan Reggiano but if you wanted to use Asiago or if you wanted to use Gruyere, if you wanted to use, you know, whatever you like, um, that's great. If you wanted to use cheddar, that's great too. And so he's just going to swirl that around a little bit and then it's going to get some parsley and uh, you could use chervil, you could use thyme, you could use chives, you could use fresh basil. Although I think that's a little bit too powerful for the delicate nature of the potato dumpling. And you know what you could do after you did this? Now, if you wanted to put in a small casserole and put some more cheese and then put it in the oven at 350 and bake it for half an hour, oh my God, you know, that's like the best macaroni and cheese without the macaroni you ever had. So now he's just going to go to the plate, and uh, Mr. DeMille will probably have uh, the first bite. That looks good. You know, and he's in the first term already. This doesn't make any sense. He's going to take my job, I think, probably. That's going to happen, right? Nice. That looks really good.